Red Sharks IBC coverage is brought to you by Matrox, Simply, and VizRT. Hey Jeff. Hi. So this is the V-Raptor XL. I've seen pictures of it, but I haven't been able to touch it in the flesh. So tell me about the XL versus the Raptor. Right, yes, yeah, so this is newly released XL, as you said. Um, the difference between the V-Raptor XL and the V-Raptor is in the body. This is a bigger body with built-in I.O. So everything that you need an expander for, typically, is built in now to the system. Three SDIs, you have Ginlock built in here, everything from the expander module that you would normally get on, on Raptor XL is built in. So you have aux power, control time code, giggy audio, um, all, all built in. On top of that, you have a built-in electronic ND system here. So you can switch between clear and the electronic ND system in the camera with buttons on the side of the camera. Um, through the monitor or even through an app. So you can even remotely control the ND system. So it's an electronically variable ND system that has quarter, one third or full stop increments, uh, giving you a, a lot of fine tuning control over the exposure in the camera. This is a first for RED to have an internal ND built into the system. On top of that, you also have built in ambient in this. So you have an ACN network for wireless time code and gin lock. And that's the two antennas you hear, see here. So you have our Wi-Fi connection here that you can use for applications, live stream from the camera uh, and control. But you now have a second antenna for that wireless time code and gin lock control. So the difference between Raptor XL and V Raptor, the smaller, its smaller uh, brother, um, is all of that built-in I/O that you that we just talked about. <clears throat> So perfect. Now, I know that you also introduced something else that's new, which is quite exciting, and that's Connect. Yes, yeah, so the Red Connect application is an application that we've added to the Raptor and Raptor XL products. And so what you're seeing here is a USB-C to Ethernet adapter, and then an Ethernet connection plugged in. What is happening over that IP connection is we are streaming R3D from the camera. So in this case, in the demo that we're showing right now, we're streaming 8K60 from the camera, full R3D quality. So that's our compressed raw 16-bit imagery in 8K from the camera system to a CCU, a camera control unit. At the camera control unit, we are processing that using NVIDIA GPUs in real time. And that allows you to broadcast stream from the camera in real time 8K60 at 16-bit. Uh, specifically in the demo that we have over here, we are converting using NVIDIA's RiverMax to SMPTE 2110, which is a broadcast compliant um, format, 8K60. And so should we go over and take a look? Yeah, definitely. Just one, one question, Jeff. Yeah. You're telling me that this is now streaming red raw, like, like right. I'm used to it? Full quality R3D uh, red raw 8K. So that also means that I can basically adjust, but then live, the things that I would normally do in post. That's correct. All of, all of the grading capability on a raw R3D you have in real time. You can add LUTs, CDLs. You can take some of the R3Ds that you're capturing and do a real time grade on that and put that back into the system. You have full flexibility of the raw file, just like you would in post. That's amazing. OK, show me. Sure. <laughs> Let's go this way. So from, from the XL camera, as we said, we're streaming in real time from the camera there. Ethernet cables running under the, under the uh, surface there, going into a switch here. So we have a Mellanox switch that's going into a Super Micro 2U server. Uh, we're actually only using one, the top one, to process the imagery in real time. So on that top 1U server, we're taking that R3D, we're processing it in real time. We're showing it here on this 8K display. So you have the wide shot that's coming from that XL camera in 8K right here. 
And just to show uh, what you can do once you are on an IP network, once you're at SIPT 2110, once you're working with, with R3D files in real time in this way, we're also taking a punch in of this full 8K signal. So we have a 1080 feed here that's coming and there is an AI application called KeyCast as, an, as a demonstration of what you can do with this, showing that they're masking out in real time from this AK feed, putting imagery behind this for broadcast environments. So you're able to layer this in with a, with a nice mask that's being created on top of that. All of the AI that NVIDIA has within their GPUs can be leveraged now in real time on 8K 60 content. So that's just one example of this. We have another example over here of what you can do with this in real time. So uh, first, actually, let's, let's show real quick what this looks like on the camera side. Excuse me for just a second. Uh, so we have two Raptors back to back right here with two 180 degree fisheye lenses. So what this is doing is streaming the feed that we're getting stitching together a full 360 degree view from the cameras. Same concept as what we talked about with Excel. You're going USB-C to Ethernet, fully over IP, over to two CCUs here that our uh, customer of ours, Media Monks, has leveraged to be able to stream in real time 8K60 to a virtual reality device, so to an Oculus headset in this case. Um, yep, yeah. it's going to be a little tricky, I guess, to show this part of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, you can see here the feed that's coming in from those two cameras is getting stitched together in real time. And when you put on the headset, you can look around in this environment and feel like you're in that environment in real time. Uh, this has a lot of applications from being virtually present at a concert, any other event, sporting events. Uh, we have a partner that is discussing that here at IBC. They're putting together a, a white paper of what we've done with them in this similar technology, as well as Media Monks um, illustrating what they've done as well. So, especially with this type of capture and the high resolution that you have, this kind of makes all the difference, I guess, for That's right. also for Oculus stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. That's right. Um, in order for virtual reality to feel real and for you to feel like you're really present in that environment, you need really high resolution, especially when you're spreading the resolution over a wide field of view. And the Raptor and Raptor XL systems allow that with 8K 16-bit real-time capture at 60 frames per second. So it's, it's a first of this quality being able to be streamed in real time. And, uh, and it's been a really impressive result. Wow, Jeff. Thanks for inspiring me. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, yeah.